In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Christ is in our midst. He is not in shadow. So just two days ago, we had the unexpected blessing of having a visit from the Iberian wonder-working icon. And indeed, the place where the icon rested on Friday evening, uh, we kind of left preserved, uh, just as a reminder for this weekend. And indeed, any time we come into contact with something divine, any time we come into contact with God's energies or activities, when the departure of that experience happens, we miss it. And indeed, certainly it leaves us with something. But in many ways, the uh, empty icon stand had a feeling of the empty tomb a little bit. And so it should. You know, many of us reflect on our Holy Week experience that during those very deep and profound services, all week we feel in the presence of the divine, as though we are with Christ and his disciples. And then, of course, when bright week comes, we, it's palpable. We, in a very experiential way, we feel the presence uh, of the empty tomb. And so we keep a vigil of that in our hearts during Holy Week. And indeed, for the rest of this weekend, we've done the same uh, with the place of where uh, the, the blessed icon had rested on Friday evening. And yet the presence of the icon in the church clearly revealed the hearts of many, as any encounter with the divine does. And it was very profound, the reactions that people had to it. And it made many across the board emotional, Many of us felt very pulled towards it, and it very much revealed a yearning that exists in our hearts all the time, but tends to get covered up and buried by the stresses and busyness of this world. And yet under those layers of the stresses and busyness of the world, there's very much a yearning, and perhaps even for some, a desperation for direct contact with God, or even perhaps for some, an affirmation of the divine, that it's real, even uh, that it exists. And so after having had a, an experience and visit, as we did from the wonder-working icon, there's a sense of wanting to hold on to it, right? Not wanting to let go to somehow preserve the experience. You know, maybe it's in the, the fragrance of the myrrh, trying to keep that Q-tip still wet with the myrrh, wanting to preserve the memory of it, even. But brothers and sisters, we are taught a lesson that oftentimes when we have these encounters with the divine, with God's energies and activities, that we just can't hold on to it in our life in this world, and it's much like trying to hold on to a fistful of sand. We all know what that's like. The tighter we squeeze, the more it spills between our fingers. Or it's much like the glimpse of a sun in a cloudy day. It shows itself only then to hide behind the clouds of this world. And so sometimes God allows us to catch, to catch glimpses of Him. We catch glimpses of Him through our encounters with Him, through signs, through miracles, through His energies. But we can only have it even for a time, and it leaves each experience, hopefully, that we accumulate in our life. It's like a trail of breadcrumbs leading us to the kingdom of God, right? But we want to hold on to it. But the reality is, brothers and sisters, we have to wait, right? We have to wait for the kingdom of God in order to have a more permanent taste and experience with these little glimpses that God allows us from time to time. And it's important to note that the visit that we had from the icon was not sought after. We did not request it. It literally just came out of nowhere. A rumor, and then a text message, and then one week in advance scheduling uh, the visit. And so it is a reminder that miracles Encounters with God's presence and energies come at times when we least expect it. 
and we're reminded of the scriptures when our Lord taught us, seek and you will find, knock and it will be open to you. But brothers and sisters, we have to make sure that we seek and that we knock in the right mind and with the right spirit. That we have to do so with humility and void of expectations and conditions. And what do we mean by that? You know, we've all been there at one time or another in our life where we try to negotiate with God. We create conditions. We say, Lord, if, if I could just have this, then I will do that. Lord, if you could just give me this or grant me that, then I will be this way. And sometimes, br brothers and sisters, there's a fine line between negotiating and manipulating. And it's ungodly sometimes. We've all been there, I've been there, where we just want something so much in our life, and we try to negotiate with God, but brothers and sisters, it doesn't work. And so visits like this weekend, of course, remind us of that. The more we chase after it, and the more we clamor for something, the more elusive it's going to be, and we will not partake of it. And so the solution, brothers and sisters, is to be to be content and to be at peace with the life that God has given us each moment. In other words, we have to call off the search for more in our life. And what do we mean by more? I mean, we, we're all engaging in it. You know, one analogy I'll use is like with age sometimes, you know, when we're, we turn 20, sometimes we wish we were 10. You know, it's different now these days. We used to want to grow up fast. The, gen the young people today, they don't. Maybe it's because they see stressed out adults in the world and they're like, I don't want any part of that. I want to stay young. But when we're 20, we wish we were 10. And then when we're 30, we wish we were 20. And when we're 40, we wish we were 30. And when 50, 40, and 60, we nostalgically look back and wish we were at the age at which, when we were at, we grumbled and complained about it. You know? And I very much do that with the summertime, for example. I, I yearn for the summer and the sunshine and longer days, and you want to hold on to those June nights and the long days, but all of a sudden, before we know it, the 4th of July is here, and many of us start to bemoan. I can't believe it. We're already in July. Where is the summer? Right. And so when it's June 1st, we wish it was May 1st. Where did May go? When it's July 1st, we look back and say, man, nostalgically, I wish it was June 1st. Where did it go? I feel like I didn't enjoy it. But then, of course, when August 1st comes around, I'm going to wish it was July 1st. The very thing that I'm moaning and complaining about now. That's one of the things that I do. And we do it in all areas of our life. We yearn for something else. And then, as time passes, we then start to yearn for the past and what we had but grumbled about at that time. And time and time again, we're faced with the reality, brothers and sisters, that if our life changed for the negative, we would be yearning for the very thing that we've been complaining about. And at some point, we have to say to ourselves, what am I doing? What am I doing to this? This doesn't work. Our life is in the now. God is to be found in the present, not in some future circumstance. Our life is now in the very things that we take for granted in the present moment. And if we catch ourselves yearning in the wrong way, yearning for things outside of God, yearning for a certain age, for a certain month, for a certain time, we're not living. And we're moving out of the space of where miracles and encounters with God's energy occur. And I, you know, even with the seasons, you know, if we only live for summer, you know, I should be pitied. What about the winter? What a tragedy to just try to uh, white-knuckle it through the winter months of Pittsburgh. What a tragedy. That too is our life. And so the goal, brothers and sisters, is to create the right conditions in our life, the right condition of the heart, the right mindset, so that those miracles and encounters with God may occur because 
they have to occur in the right conditions because if they do not, it could actually cause harm to us. And maybe many parents could relate to that. Maybe our child wants something. But because of the way they're acting or the condition of their heart, we know if we give it to them at that moment, it's going to hurt them. It's going to reinforce something negative in them. The begging, the negotiating, the expectations, the entitlement, where it could lead to spoiling. And so we want to give it to them. But we have to wait until the time is right, until they're in the right heart and mindset. And brothers and sisters, that's how it is with us and God. He wants to give us what we yearn for. But we have to create the right conditions inside. The conditions of humility, of peace, of gratitude, of being content with the life that God has given me, where I am now and what I am doing right now, even when it's gray and cloudy and miserable. No matter what age, no matter what time of year, to say that this is it, this is the now, not always yearning for something at the future horizon. And brothers and sisters, the, the visits of these wonder-working icons, they, they teach us that. And if we look at where they occur, they don't occur in great places. They don't occur in great cathedrals. They occur in the most humble of parishes that are almost forgotten. A tiny mission that doesn't even have its own church in Hawaii that fell forgotten by the church in the mainland United States. A tiny country church in a small town, Taylor, Pennsylvania. The great lure streaming icon that is there. A, a tiny church that nobody knew about. Even if you lived in eastern Pennsylvania, nobody had heard of Taylor, Pennsylvania. And yet this is where one of the most profound lure streaming icons took place with the most humble of hearts and the most humble of places. There's a, such a great lesson and message for us to take from them. So if we yearn for God, and, and if we yearn for connection with the divine, we have to create such a space in our heart. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.